Hi Tank. I'm going to show you the full video on how I assembled this grill gazebo. It's really a two or three man job, but of course I did it uh, by myself. So if you want to see how it's done, take a look. It's pretty long, but I didn't want to leave out any important steps. I'm packing some things here. I have a bag of hardware. Put that there for now. Put on my E3. D6 and a B8. Two short posts, two tall posts, front and back, no doubt. F1, E1, E2, E3, D6, D7, you get the idea. So it's all laid out whenever the instructions call for a certain number. I don't have to dig through piles, it's all laid out here. Come and grab those. Lay them out so I can read the part numbers. I remember that I've got both for eights, inch and three quarters. These are number eights, two and a half inch. So two different lengths. Um, here's some quarter inch bolts. I'll put the quarter inch all laid out there so that uh, I can grab the right thing according to the instructions. Got some tools which I'll put over here to the side. Got posts three and four. <clears throat> layouts but I have a long pole and a short pole. I've got the open ends toward me and I'm going to put these uh, post feet on here. This is the right thing, these uh, plastic caps. Got two bags and they are both identical. Each bag has two post feet they call them. So I need this with some inch and a half number eight screws. So the other two are down here. It says get your Q1 rail. Okie dokie. Let's see what Q1 looks like. Q1. There's Q2. Here's Q1. I have two Q1s. They're identical, of course. Both sides are the same. The holes go all the way through. The deal is these will. Uh, Basically, they'll lay out like such. Um, the longer the poles are going to be, even on the bottom, of course, the Q1 rail will be level when we stand the post up. So the taller pole, that board doesn't go all the way up to the uh, end of it, which is correct. I have to get some bolts here. Which ones? I need the barrel nuts, inch and a half barrel nuts, inch and a half barrel nuts. Got washers. 12 by 19 washers. 12 by 19 black washers. Got some <laughs> 8 by 19 washers going the other side. 
8 by 19. This is not going to be confusing at all. And then I've got the bolts, the 4 and 3 quarters inch. 4 and 3 quarters inch bolts. Okay. Can you see where I'm at? All right. Okay, the deal is the uh, bolts come up through the bottom and have the uh, 8 by 19 washers on the bolts. So these go on the bolts. These are metal lock washers. Okay. And then you have 12 by 19. I see why they're 12 now because they have to go around the larger diameter um, barrel nuts. So the barrel nuts go in the holes. Bolts come up through the bottom. This would be a good place for a. Uh, that shows us laying on the ground, but then it shows you doing this. It would be a good place to uh, prop something up. We'll just stick those in there for now. A little bolt. Barrel nut. They've given me a T30 Torx bit. I'll probably just tighten these most of the way. Maybe after I stand it up. says do the other two we'll see nope there's more wants me to put some brackets on down there and a e2 rail i would rather use all these bolts while i have them out when i learn a step that i know is going to be repeated i like to just go ahead and do it see this will be the same deal this will be the uh, this will be opposite actually okay the uh, extra screws to the inside that's a given short leg on the short leg side long leg on the long leg side extra screws on the inside Common sense tells me that four is going to go on top of these instead of below it. So, since we know Q1 is going to be just like that, going to be a mirror image of the other. If I am wrong, I will apologize later or just edit this out of the video. Ha uh ha, -huh. not really. I'll tell you. It'll be just the opposite deal. Um, still, the uh, the little washers go on the bolts, but this time, the well, same as the other. The bolts go through the board first, then into the post. But just on that one, we had to do it from the bottom side.
bigger rock washer bronco because they're in larger diameter. More of those over here. sure my threads, I want to be sure my threads are started really well before I put the impact wrench on because I don't want to cross thread these guys. Okay, so I did the top rail on both sets of posts. Now I'm going to do this this bottom, this E2 rail, which is going to take a couple brackets, some different screws. The reason I changed up and did both is because this is a whole different set of screws. E2. Got a uh, Ivan Bell bolt right there. Got a couple E2s. I need one for this one later. one for this one now. L bracket. That's the only brackets I have. So It's got them uh, this is going to go against the board and the shorter one's going to go against my rail and it's going to go the board will be on the bottom and these will screw into the to the rails. Inch and a quarter bolts. Just bolts? No, bolts and nut barrels. Okay. Which ones? Five eighths. So on these brackets, come uh, through the through the board with the uh, nuts. No washer on the bolts down from the top since they're not going into wood. that up as best I can up through the bottom down through the top I'm just tightening that till these pull in a bit Indented a little bit, but I don't want to pull it, you know, so far into the board that the board's damaged. And then it'll take a couple of screws there, so I've let another bracket. All nuts have the uh, lock washers on them. I'm going through the wood with those. I'm finding any, anywhere you use the, uh, the lock washers, it's going to be up against the wood surface. You can see a pattern on this kind of stuff once you uh, start putting it together. It can save you some grief trying to struggle and figure things out if you recognize the patterns. I know every time I go to wood, I'm going to have to have a lock washer. When I go metal to metal, I'm not going to have a lock washer. Okay, I just need to see which screws go in here. All right, so a lag screw has coarse thread. It, it will thread itself into wood. 
you usually want to drill a pilot hole if you're using a leg screw because usually they're a bigger screw and they can uh, splinter out or split out the wood if you have a pilot hole you want it slightly smaller than the size of the uh, of the shank or the the part of the screw that's, that's uh, between the uh, threads there uh, so you want it to want it to be a nice tight fit so they've already pre-drilled the holes Again, I'm going metal to metal, so no, no lock washers. All of their screws have a uh, kind of a sawtooth um, grip on them. I can see that this uh, board's a little bit warped. just uh, out of place and what you don't want to do is over tighten your leg screws and pull them through strip them out then they're pretty much useless one thing I did not take note of this little board here I locked out did it right it's got a bunch of holes here for those uh, balusters those metal pipes to go in that goes to the top and on the other one I'll have to make sure it goes to the bottom there may be a, uh, yeah, I'm sure that we'll, when it comes to that, we'll have this stood up and we'll put the pipes in, then we'll put the top board in. <clears throat> this one's done for now. I'll do that one. This is what I'm talking about. This board, there is a certain way. This is on the bottom, smooth side. These, these go up because all these little, uh, metal pipes are going to go in there all right a couple brackets
Okay, so now that we've assembled the two uh, sets of corner posts, so we've got two sides basically assembled. The next thing it wants me to do is uh, start putting uh, this front rail across here. Um, so this is where really you need two people. But I only have myself, so this is where I start to improvise. Uh, later on in the book, it's going to tell me to put mounting uh, plates on the... Later on, it's going to tell me to put mounting plates on the legs. I'm going to go ahead and do that now so that I can put a uh, screw down through the mounting plate so these things don't fall over on me while I'm trying to uh, put up the uh, board to go across the top. So I'm going to get the mounting plates out. Let's see here. Got the eight mounting plates front and back of, of each corner uh, post. Let's go on with the four and a half inch screws. See here. No, no washer since we're going metal to metal. Take the Barrels, I'm assuming it doesn't say. Maybe it does. Here we go. 069 nut barrels, which are the 5 8 inch. Okay. And the short ones. Okay, two bolts, two nut barrels per plate. Two plates per leg. Holes are already pre-drilled, of course. So you slide that in, put that, that barrel in from the other side. Get them started. on all four legs. So from from looking at it, you're either going to see the head of a barrel nut or the head of a bolt. So it really doesn't matter which one you're looking at. So in this case, I'm putting the bolts in from the outside. That's what the picture showed, but it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna be changing out a lot of these deck boards this summer anyway. So I'm not worried about putting them couple holes in and a couple of them I'm not going to screw that one down because I don't know the exact distance yet. Okay, let's get back to the instructions. So we are 
we're right here on page 16 now we're gonna find this uh, D3 and a D1 and a D2 we do have it oriented taller legs are facing the camera here so that's the front so the, and the front is where we want to add this uh, this work here so D1 D2 and D3 <laughs> New bolt. I haven't used this one yet. Five and a half inch. Okay, eight bolts. We've got nine bolts in the package. It's gonna have washers on every bolt there they are okay the washers I need one on every bolt very nice of them now the Half barrel nuts. Five eighths barrel nuts, inch and a half barrel nuts. I'll need eight of those and they will need the other washers on. Eight of these. And I don't know if I clearly point this out. The barrel nuts obviously have a larger diameter than the bolt. So the smaller washers I keep referring to have the smaller diameter go on these bolts. Larger diameter washers fit around the larger diameter barrel nuts. So, eight of these. Okay, and it's got the bolts going in from the outside, barrel nuts from the back side. So what we can do, we can stick all the barrel nuts in on the back side. And... Got this in there. It's got the... Uh, Oh, it's got the board in the front. So actually I have it right. Close this one. Here. So what I'm gonna do is stick a bolt here. This is the old working by yourself trick so. This one bolt started. Okay. Now, I'm controlling whether that falls or not by holding this in. Oh well. Need this piece. Actually, I need to slide this out like an inch or so. estimating on this. Okay, so that can't fall now. Gotta grab my RP 
this here. So when I tightened these down, I, I basically just barely countersunk uh, the, uh, the flange on these uh, bolt heads. Um, you don't want to really sink it in very far because you start damaging the wood. So got all four, well I don't, I've got those four bolts on, I'm going to tighten these down. sets of side posts could have fallen over and broken which would have been bad could have fallen over into the house broke a glass out of the patio door something like that or worse yet I could have gotten hurt somehow so the JSA you know you always do this mentally after uh, years of doing things so what I was concerned about was this breaking but also falling over into the house that's why I chose this side to anchor down to the deck um, because if this side fell there's nothing it can hit within within reach nothing within reach that it could hit so that's why I anchored this side and then you saw that when I was working with the uh, the loose ends I was over here because I wasn't worried about this side falling down so that's just a little tip JSA job safety analysis always a good idea always do it mentally what could go wrong what what's my contingencies to or what's my plan to mitigate that risk so that uh, nothing bad happens so that's that's a little uh, that's a little tip anytime you're doing any kind of a job you know, always do a mental JSA job safety analysis got these tight and now with four bolts up here on each side and this one screwed to the deck I'm not going to worry anymore about this falling over it's it's pretty good and everything we do from here out will just make it uh, stronger okay next step all right let's 
Speaking of stronger, we're gonna put some little uh, uh, corner braces on there, which will really beef up these uh, corners, take away all the flex. So those are D4 and D4. Okay, run D4. Two D4s, they look identical, they're not mirror images. No. Yeah, that was a knot hole, I thought it was a hole. They are identical. Identical. Okay. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you put on which side. We're gonna anchor them through with some uh, bolts. 5 16 two and a quarter bolts, two of those, two 5 16 7 8 barrel nuts. It's got the uh, nuts going in from the back, the bolts from the front, but same deal like I pointed out earlier, it's not going to matter. You're not going to see, um, unless there's a difference in the diameter of the holes they drilled. Barrel nuts will fit through the front, so no. It's not gonna matter if we go front or back. Just, just so you know that. Oh, yeah, there's the hole. Okay, it does matter. No, it does not matter. It does not matter. I thought these holes were smaller diameter. This one just got splinters in it. Let's stick the barrel nuts in. those in now I just have to deal with four bolts this comes in from the back orientation matters two bolts which leg bolts that takes. Four inch. I bet you it's this little package of four that's totally unmarked. Totally unmarked, but that's a four inch leg screw. Bolt has uh, machine threads that uh, screw into a nut or a threaded hole. Screw, leg screw, goes into wood. It's got coarse threads. Coarse threads, pointy. Uh, it's kind of tapered uh, in, inside the threads there. Gets a little bigger as it goes, pulls itself in. Leg screw bolt so anytime they say leg screw or you know you're just screwing into wood 
look for something like this that's got the, uh, the pointy end and the coarse threads. much more stable this is as far as can't really shimmy this way too much anymore that's what these corner uh, braces do they basically create a, uh, a good triangle here which does not want to change shape so that really keeps your, uh, your uh, structure from swaying side to side page 18 Q2 rail, it's on the back side. It's, uh, it's got some extra holes here. Looks like the through holes. Find Q2. See how hard that was? Hard being easy since I had it all laid out. Now it looks that this is symmetrical. They're through holes. It's not gonna matter orientation up down left right it's all going to be the same so i'm going to put this in with uh four and three quarter bolts with the inch and a half barrel nuts four and three quarter So we will be using the, the lock washers. Okay, it's not going to matter, but they've got the bolts coming in from the front. They've got the, lock, the uh, barrel nuts going on in the back. Well, when I say front, it's really the back. They've got the bolts coming in from the outside and the barrel nuts on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and stick all these barrel nuts in. The popes here. Stick the other six bolts through there. 
stick them in there too far, you'll see what just happened. I knocked my barrel nut out. Okay, what I'm going to do now is start the threads on all the way to these. There are little burrs on the outer edges sometimes. Sometimes it's uh, the coating. These are all coated screws that you have to kind of break through that to know whether or not you're cross threaded. <clears throat> you don't want to cross thread. Cross threading is when the threads don't start out. thread on the receiving end, the nut doesn't match the thread on the bolt, and it kind of cuts its own thread, and then that kind of ruins the nut and the bolt. Okay, we are page 19. We've got uh, a couple more corner braces. These are different. We've got a D5 and a D9. Um, we've got uh, same deal with, uh, we're holding them on with um, the 7 8 inch barrel nuts and we're using the two inch bolts. So I'm gonna get those ready. I'm gonna need four bolts, four two inch bolts and four um, seven, eighths inch, seven eighths inch barrel nuts. Seven eighths inch, four nuts. What do we do? Do you have to lock on everything? And what's the idea? Back side of the wood here. Get the D5 and the D9. D5 and D9 look look identical. I don't know why they call them out separately. But the same angles, same pull the leg bolt. They are not mirror imaged. They are identical. So I'm saying it doesn't matter. We will put one of them here. What does matter is that the hole for the leg bolt faces down. I did learn on these front braces is it's hard to see where your pilot hole is for your leg bolt once you get those uh, other bolts in. So I'm going to pause here, get the uh, two leg screws. Now with this still loose, I just take my leg screw through, and I can line my point of the screw up with my pilot hole. There, now, I know, now I know I'm hitting my pilot hole. It just gives you a better connection. You risk splitting out the wood when you don't use a pilot hole. And what physically is happening the threads are kind of pushing out 
the wood as they go in instead of cutting into a pre-drilled hole. When they cut into a pre-drilled hole, they have good bite. If you're pushing the wood out as the screw goes in, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to cut in, so it doesn't cut its threads, so it's, it's not as strong, basically. Starting the threads with the wrench, just because they are they are uh, not starting easily finger tight, and you run a big risk when you start with the drill or the impact driver. Big risk of cross threading. So I'll play it safe. Start them with the wrench. On the side rails apparently um, had a hard time figuring out what they meant here so I'll get my E2 rail which I think is yeah that's wood I get these E2 bores and add some bracketry to them so E2s have the holes in the bottom. I know it's the bottom because that's where these uh, these uh, pipes are going to go from the bottom rail up through the top rail. Uh, left and right doesn't matter. They're both E2s, so they're identical. What's it want me to do? All right, get these L brackets. Got four L brackets here. L brackets are going to go on each end. And there's another L bracket, one that's got the uh, long end and the short, long side and short side. Long side goes against the board. So we're going to be screwing metal to metal. We won't be using any lock washers. We will use the 5 8 inch bolt and the inch and a quarter, no, inch and a quarter bolt and the 5 8 inch barrel nut. 5 8 inch barrel nut. Use four of these. Okay. So I've got the uh, large L bracket. Got the holes facing me. Got the uh, smaller L bracket 
which will be mounted. We're gonna be bolting this to those corner posts later. So it's gonna go like that. We've got the uh, 5 8 inch barrel nuts, which it's not gonna matter if the nuts are on the front or the back. look the same it shows through you got uh, what size bolts inch and a quarter bolts inch and a quarter bolts and these are four of those two of them here Start them by hand. I want <clears throat> this all to be flush, so this is close enough. Excuse this table. These coated bolts. You have a uh, rough thread. It's hard to know whether you're started correctly or not. So, got that side done. Same deal on the other side. Let's see. Make sure I haven't messed up. Yep. I can't. I gotta look next stage what's oh I see the long bracket's gonna go to the outside because we're gonna attach those uh, tabletops to it okay makes sense Build the other side just like this side. It works just as well this way or that way. But even though I figured out what they're for, I didn't pay attention. Um, I need the flat surface. These are, these are kind of trapezoidal, uh, 90 degrees. You know, comes out parallel here, or, or flush, then it uh, angles down. Put this one on backwards and I have to uh, turn that one around. So that being said, turning it around is not an option. These brackets, that's why they're in two packages. One, there's two lefts and two rights basically in each package. So I gotta find the one, this one, that's gonna come out and support my table. stick in the metal tubes they're on page 21 drop in all the metal tubes at the bottom drop the thing I just built across the top 
then later it's going to tell me uh, what screw to use to hold it in. Put the spindles in, set your top rail on it, get your inch and a half leg bolts. Eight of them. Inch and a half. packages of the uh, spindles, one for each side. I'm just poking these spindles into the pre-drilled holes in my bottom rail that I Early on. And since I had so much fun doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the other side. If it's possible to repeat a step that you just did, easier to do it while it's all fresh in your mind exactly if there was any tricks or something okay and it is okay with me screwing those in page 22 says yep go ahead screw them in so, shelf support going out. Line up. Get all of the uh, baluster posts, spindles. Starting all these at first. I want to take one more look before I cut everything down. Okay, that looks good. Everything on right. Go ahead and tighten these eight bolts down on this side. Now 
we have a solid structure. Get this side on. It's going to be really, really solid. Holes on the bottom. Brackets coming straight out the sides. Kind of uh, pick a side. Start lining up your pipes to your holes. Can't move on until you get the first hole lined up. Uh, good shape. No reason not to tighten it down. Ready for the next step. Okay, we are on page 24 here in the book. Yep, um, we're gonna start putting putting together uh, the roof assembly. It says to get the uh, the D6 board and an F1 board. So still got my boards laid out over here. Uh, D6, F1. Make a little room on our hardware table. Right here. So, it's got the uh, board laying in this orientation. Uh, and it's got this board in this orientation. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Align rafter with pilot holes on beam. Oh. Okay. So we got it. Is that in the picture good? I'll tip it down here a bit. So there are uh, holes here. In the rafter, there's some pilot holes here in the in the beam. Line up the poles. Basically, the top edge of this is going to be the top edge of that. And I'm going to use the uh, number eight screws, two and a half inches long. Screws eight, two and a half. screwdriver bit and I'm just screwing through the rafter and the line I'll let my screw 
sick through a bit so that I can make sure that my screw is going into that pilot hole because that screw would just go right into that board anywhere it doesn't need a pilot hole so uh, make sure I got lined up good I will start one on both ends there we go just gonna countersink those till the heads flush I think that's what that uh, bit they gave me was intended for so you don't over countersink these okay that was pretty easy let's do this one time well that was step 17 Step 18, page 25, uh, build the other. Going to build the other rafter assembly, which it kind of, uh, kind of told me to do that. Still on page 24, folks. Set that one there. Get my other rafter board. Okay, this one. We're gonna make the mirror image. The one we just made. Yep. Got to do the same thing with the screws. I've moved things. Now I can't find my screws. Here they are. That is not them. There they are. You hear these screws? One screw left over. They've done that pretty consistently, giving me one extra piece of hardware. So, I push that through, line up the pilot hole, go to this end, push this one through. drive it through either way. Push it. Line up with the pilot hole. Screw it down. Countersink just below flush. Countersink meaning this this is flush. Countersink means that the head of the screw is slightly deeper than flush so that's countersink uh, this one's a little bit a little bit more countersunk and that one is just right below flush what's next hardly wait oh gonna put the beam d7 across the back of the uh, two rafter assemblies Mm -hmm. So it's going to, uh, this D7, these rafter assemblies, uh, the um, outer beam sticks out further than the rafter. So this back beam will fit right in there. And it goes together with a seven. About three more. These screws here. I'm going to need one, two, three, four of them. there. These require the uh, torx bit. And they never pick up my D7. 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 Big old board. 
It's got uh, pre-drilled holes here, three sets. They're they're offset to one to one side. There's not a hole here, so it matters which orientation you put this. Let's figure it out. Aha! Uh -huh. These holes go toward the top. So lay this here. two rafter assemblies which are going to go this is an outer edge inside so after I do something like this lay it out when I think it's right I'll look at it and compare it oh yeah before I put the screws in I make sure it's right so this is correct I'll put these screws in Sink those just past flush. Anytime something does, so now flip it over and say, This is why you need two people. Or, if I would have built it upside down, I wouldn't need to flip it over. Okay, gets flipped. The other three rafters, E1, E3, and E1. E3 in the middle. E1 here, E1 here. We're laying them down with the notches down. And these are going to go together with which screws? The uh, Number seven, three inches. The ones we just had. I'm going to put in three boards and six screws. I bet you there's seven in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The manufacturers are pretty predictable once you figure out what they're doing. One extra piece of hardware. It's fantastic. Start both screws before I tighten either down. And I'm torquing them to just below flush. pre-drilled holes it would be pretty easy to countersink these bolts you know all the way through the board which you would not want to do 
before I say stop just below flush. Okay. This is this is done. Make sure we're still recording. Running out of pages and running out of wood. I got three sticks left. Now H2 purling. Are you kidding me? Turn this over again, they say. Well now I've got to hold five things while I turn that over. Well they were pretty long bolts, so I'm gonna assume the bolts will support the weight. Um, could flip it this way, reduce any risk. So I'm worried now if I would just tip this and all these hang, they may split out or something. So I'm not going to tip it sideways. I'm going to spin this now. Lay it down. Okay. Now. Curious that those are just kind of dangling out in the air like that. But they are. Okay. We're gonna get the H2 purlin. We have three H2 purlins. I'm going to screw in that first one before I lay the extra weight of these other two on there. Because I don't want this or support from the side now already. So we're, we're good. But regardless, I'm going to take care of this one so this makes it go back. Before I add the weight on further down. Inch and three quarter, number eight. Inch and three quarter, number eight. Takes Phillips head screwdriver bit. One, two, three, four, five screws per purlin. And I need a few.
one more screw. Pretty good. Pretty good estimate. Grabbed a handful of screws with one screw Okay. Now that uh, roof structure is complete. We're completed down through page 28. Now we need some sheet metal. Got some over there. So, gloves should be worn. Uh-oh. Little JSA, handling sheet metal. Instructions say gloves should be worn. What could go wrong? See what they say to do. Okay. It says front. I'll start it here. This one will lay over that. We'll lay them all out, then we'll center them all up. Now we do know we're overlapping the last, the last strip, the first strip. So. today. I don't know. 70s. But that sun is toasting. I have to get gloves just to handle this stuff. Yeah, it just took a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. So I laid out the sheet metal on the uh, roofing deck uh, centered it side to side pretty much just uh, barely uh, more than a, a full board showing here uh, on both sides um, next thing to do is put in all of the screws that hold the decking down so we'll do that real quick 
we are supposed to use these. Number 10, 16 by 3 quarter. Screw wood grip. Okay. So, I'm going to start here on the. This will be the flush edge. These screws have a uh, have a rubber washer on them. Grommet, I suppose. It helps uh, keep the water from running down through the screw hole. Since this is just a gazebo, probably not that big of a deal. But if you were using the same type of uh, roofing on your shed or garage or house, you would use similar screws. is full length goes on the sides this edge hangs over so and it goes from the top rib hangs over the edge so these side ones go on first you uh, support it up on the ridge the last ridge on your piece of sheet metal roofing Use your line of purling screws and go right down the center of that bridge. That's why you got a self packing screw attached to drill a hole and drive through at the same, at the same time. would have it the screw that holds the purling on is right under where I'm trying to drive this screw it didn't tell me to look out for that right. screw a little bit. So I'm going to ignore their advice to uh, put these in line with the other screws because I know I have another purling screw right there. So I'm going to move over half an inch. Much better. Okay, the remaining Put on with the other trim. I've got the other piece of side trim here. I'm going to line up the same way I did that side with the flush on this end. 
or hanging more here. We're assuming that's going to work out. We drive the two screws there toward the center. We are going to offset a little from our row of screws because we know there's a purling screw underneath this ridge. We want to avoid it like that. Four of these shorter pieces and, and two really short pieces. So, so these short pieces will go short, short, and a little one in between them. Short, short, and a little one between them. So we'll get those all uh, peeled off and laid out and when we screw those down, we're going to screw them into the uh, the rafters there. So on these uh, shorter roof trims, there there's uh, a splice piece they call it. Basically, slides slides in there. That and another one makes it long enough to go across the front and the back. It will not overlap. <clears throat> so we're going to slide the splice piece over. And hold this piece where I want it. Screw it down. Then how many screws do you want me to put in there? Three more. One in each. Uh, one in each rafter. Yeah. That'll be in the rafter, but it's not necessarily going to hit on a uh, rib. I don't want to drive that screw down because it'll just pull that in and bend it. pieces on I'll do the same thing on the back side uh, got that symbol that's 24 Take it up there from the back side and bolt it down. Well, we'll see. I don't know how heavy this is. It looks heavy. It looks pretty heavy. Okay, well, first thing is to get it to the back side. Uh, 
All right. I definitely recommend two or three people for this. This stuff here. I can drop this. Get her. Break something. stages. pounds. Oh really. I don't know what it weighs. It wasn't that bad. Most people would want to do this with two people, I'm sure. Okay, now I can get under it and position it better. Okay, so we're going to center it up here side to side. Looks like this side's uh, right in the middle of that little wing here. This side is pretty close. There's probably, oh, here's a better indicator. See, I've got two bolts here. I'm right on this bolt. Here I'm on the inner bolt. I, I should go for between the two bolts. That'll be my center point. On the, the inside here, I was just going to butt this to that. So that's, that's pretty much only one place that can be. But butt that to that. The back side just, uh, the rafters just sit on the back rail here. So we'll center it up a bit better. It can't really fall off on me at this point. So yeah, center between these two uh, bolts here. Same thing on the back side, which really can't be any different. That's where it goes. Let's just uh, tie it down before the wind picks up. Tie it in with uh, these guys. These things here. Rafter clips. 
Raster clips are held together with a quarter inch by two inch bolt. Quarter by two. Um, four of those. Got four. Um, got washers. Locking nuts. Screws. I don't have any of those. Uh, no, just locking nuts. New, new piece of hardware here. Quarter inch locking nuts. These are uh, uh, some people call them nylocks. Nylon locking, thread lock. Basically has uh, nylon um, on the back side of the nut. So when you screw it on, you get so far, then you get into the nylon, you have to kind of cut threads into the nylon and it uh, keeps it from loosening without a tool so got four four of these it's good because I dropped one and we got uh, four nylon nuts on the bolt And then what kind of screw? Got this screwed in with a inch and a quarter number eight. An inch and a quarter, a little of screw we've used all day is gonna hold the roof on this thing. Great. And this uses a uh, Phillips head bit. There she is. So we've got the roof tied down. Found that nut that I lost. So I've got all the uh, rafter tie downs put in. It's looking pretty good. All we have left now is the tables that go on the side and some hangers and some electricity. But uh, it's coming together. All right, we're getting down to the uh, brass tacks here. So now it's wanting me to put these uh, uh, feet on the legs, which I already did early on, <clears throat> but I didn't put these little side plates on. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put those side plates on now. I'm going to use the lag screws, the uh, 5 16 inch and a half lag screws, and these little square post plates. There should be uh, eight of them, four in this package. Same part number, four in this package, and 
<clears throat> uses these lag screws which go on with this bit. These are pretty much decorative. <clears throat> no real purpose for them. Well, we got uh, two to put on each leg. You hear that noise? The battery's low on your uh, driver. Swap this out real quick. GoPro stop capture. New battery. pilot holes for these light bolts are drilled. generous with these lag bolts we have two extra two spares all right now we're on step 27 wow literally uh, putting the little nameplate on there three quarter inch screw Number eight, three quarter inch. Pretty sure that's the two little screws I have laying right here. I do not see pre drilled holes that are supposed to be. <coughs> no. This is, uh, put it where you want it. The picture has it right down here. No pre drill holes.
these screws don't match. decorative nameplate hey somewhere we missed the part where ah how about where this page is stuck together no we never did put these uh, side tables on roof show oh, okay without with that right there right here shelf assembly jump back to step 16 uh, just putting these tabletops here on the uh, yeah just putting these tabletops here on the sides uh, using some leg screws some 5 16 inch and a half leg screws um, okay, looks like they just sit on there. Well, huh. What we missed, it's not a big deal. Um, the top two bolts here, that bolt and that bolt, have to come back out, set the tabletop on, and put the bolts back through. There are holes here in the side of the tabletop that those bolts go through. So we'll back up and do that. Fortunately, it's not a major. Uh, Fortunately, it's not a major deal. I will want an extension on this bit though. Leg bolts only on both sides. I need a little flex in these legs. We're gonna have to loosen uh, the other, the other two bolts and the two bolts here. these temporary anchors we have out. We're going to have to give 
give that a kick. <clears throat> what that did was create a gap. Just sit down here. And I need a gap on both sides. So we'll have to loosen these two as well. Okay, now I've got all kinds of play. This is probably where they wanted me to have the big uh, rubber mallet. Well, that's sitting in, in place. Back it up three feet of holes. Start leg bolts in the uh, four top holes. Not going to tighten those down until I get a bolt in every hole. bottom ones back up. Okay. Tabletop's in. I do the same thing over here. Take out the top. Two bolts on both sides. All the way out. Loosen the bottom two one side, actually both sides, because I have to have, have to create a gap here on both sides. And then loosen the bottom rail <clears throat> on one side. It's fine. Now, use a mallet, or if you got safety boots on, kick, now I've got my gaps. Four bolts through the holes. Just gonna start this one. Tighten 
that one at the bottom. Second one down. Alright, these two <coughs> and these two. Slide table, pretty nice. Now I am almost out of parts. Almost out of parts. I've just got some uh, little uh, hangers here and that electrical thing we looked at yesterday. Catch back up. Okay, these little uh, deals here, <clears throat> got the three quarter inch number eight screws. I'm about out of screws, but I have some three quarter inch number eights. Two, three, four of these things, four screws. These are uh, Phillips head screws, so back to the uh, Phillips bit. And these are just hung on the center between each uh, purlin. These are just to hang your cookware or whatever. They got all four of them on the back row. Uh, no. There's two on the back rail. Doesn't show, but uh, we'll put uh, the other two on the side rails here. So these are just uh, little fancy hangers. All I have is this electrical thing. I'm suspecting this goes up high because you don't want rain getting on it. They say it comes with its own assembly instructions. Well, that is true. That is true. It's got its own assembly instructions. I don't even know what this uh, is for. This part. It's got the outlets, it's got the phone charger, basically an extension cord. Uh, just hangs on supposedly some little brackets. These little brackets. With these little screws.
these little brackets have the little uh, little pegs sticking out which will line up here you know alternately you would put drywall screws in your board and hang it but this is a lot nicer so we'll do this um so my thinking is this needs to be high somewhere where the rain is least likely to get on it. And also, because if it's low, and you have any kind of rain at all, it's gonna get, it's gonna get wet. I would like to know what they have in mind for this little thing. Maybe that plays into what, where I want it. Maybe that's just supposed to be where you lay your phone or something. Regardless, uh, we have a nice little template here. Several templates. Got another nice little template here. So the purpose of this template is just so I can get the spacing to this bracket to that bracket right. So basically I just stick this template up there and I can just uh, poke. I'll just poke holes. Boom, 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 boom. And then I'll screw these on. Once I decide where this is going to be, I think... If you didn't want to use the uh, this guy, they've got these screws, which we don't want to use. I don't think. No. Hang on to these for some other some other job. Uh, what we do want to do is just mount these. These screws that came with it. Perfect. And the indentations that I just made. It's kind of trash, actually. 
Get a better bit. sound of a slipping uh, bit on a screw. That is just future trouble. Okay, if my template worked right, or if I worked my template right, this should just be like magic. Just uh, slides on all four posts. And down. And that is done. All I need is power to here. I guess I'll put a phone there or something. That's good. Folks, I think we've done it. I think it is complete. This is a temporary home for this guy. I'm going to put in a pad for it in the future. Or I think I mentioned we're planning on building a picnic pavilion out in the yard. Or possibly something else. Um, but this is just temporary. I think I'm going to turn it, put it where my table is there for now so it's complete it's a nice uh, nice little setup got your tables here you you get your grill in there you're in the dry I think when I get to the permanent location I'll hang some lighting in here I'll have power ran to it eventually uh, have that permanently hooked up to power have some lights out here for late night grilling so I don't know how many hours it took like I said the instructions say one uh, two people four hours um, I kind of stopped and go stopped and go um, one night I unpacked it sorted everything put together the sides then the next time I you know did a little more put together the roof at one setting uh, put the extra trims on here in just a half hour or so this evening so it wasn't that strenuous for one person to do uh, a little bit uh, sketchy putting the roof on when you see that part that definitely takes two people um, unless you're just uh, um, glutton for punishment like I am so there we go. Hope you enjoyed it.